Good evening. A new federal audit confirms what the King 5 investigators reported back in February. Serious staffing shortages have led to hundreds of assaults inside the state's maximum security lockup for juvenile offenders. This one, caught on camera, shows a guard in a violent situation with no backup in sight. Federal auditors found the Green Hill School is not meeting minimal staff levels on most shifts. And that creates a dangerous environment for the kids and staff members who watch over them. Chris Ingalls is here now with more on that story. Chris? Hello, Greg Joyce. Yes, counselors and security officers at the Green Hill School told us they don't feel safe as they watch over our state's most violent juvenile offenders. Since our first story aired in February, the state is pledging big changes to its juvenile rehabilitation program. A warning, some of the video in this story is graphic. Behind the razor wire and tall fences sits the Green Hill School in Chehalis. It's the state's only maximum security facility for older male juveniles. Security cameras capture what happens on the inside. These are some of the nearly 500 assaults reported at Green Hill during a two-year period, according to records obtained by the King 5 investigators. My life was in danger, definitely. It was like watching myself dying. I just... I was being hit and knocked out. Chris Stubblefield is the security officer blindsided by a 17-year-old offender in this video. It's not a safe place to work. He was working alone in this housing unit. Some wings were left with like one person that may have had a, a, a census of maybe 12 to 16 residents. Were they living up to the required staff ratio? I don't believe they were. That is confirmed in the pages of this new federal audit. Green Hill is required to fill ratios of one staff member for every eight offenders during waking hours. But the auditor found the school falling short. Staffing ratios are out of compliance on every shift every day, creating an unsafe environment. It was my number one staffing need and it was the number one budget ask that we had coming into last year's budget. Ross Hunter is secretary of the Department of Youth, Children and Families, who says he's disturbed by the number of assaults at Green Hill. We're going to have to deal with young people who've committed more violent crimes. Our job is to try and keep everybody safe. Uh, and I thought I needed more staff in order to do that. Hunter's department inherited Green Hill less than two months ago. The Department of Social and Health Services, DSHS, operated three large juvenile facilities across the state until July. That's when a long planned transfer of juvenile rehabilitation was handed over to the Department of Children, Youth and Families, Hunter's department. We think that if we keep youth safe from violence that will also keep staff safe. Hunter said his top priority was adding more staff for juvenile rehabilitation. Both the governor and the legislature responded and we got 57 new staffers to spread across our facilities that started in July five weeks ago. Those 57 new positions are being filled now costing millions of dollars more per year. Hunter admits there are other hurdles to face. The pay is low, salaries start at $36,000, and employee turnover at the state's juvenile facilities is high. If we're going to teach staff how to be competent counselors, competent therapists, to do the kind of dialectical behavior therapy that we do that is the state of the art in this business, um, we're going to need to be able to have a stable and a really super well-trained workforce to do that. They are working with a challenging population. The teen that struck Chris Stubblefield attacked another security officer seven months later. This time, as you can see in this video, there happened to be two staff members present and a much different outcome as the kid is wrestled under control. It's the third time Darius Bruton assaulted a staff member. Well, we can't lock him away. Uh, we can't keep him in his room at all times. Green Hill Superintendent Jennifer Redmond says it highlights a difficult mission to treat young offenders and not just punish them. If staff don't feel safe, if youth don't feel safe, then good treatment can occur. And that's the bottom line. There is a trend against locking up juvenile offenders, so the population of Green Hill has actually gone down. However, that means offenders that are there are the most violent, and that's why Secretary Hunter says he wants a fully staffed, well-trained workforce at all these juvenile facilities across the state. I, I think most viewers would agree that that is really hard video to watch and it elicits like an almost an anger and a, yeah. an emotion inside you that yeah. you're like oh but yeah 
the question is, what happened to the guy, with the yeah, kid? Yeah, so he's been convicted of assault twice in adult court, uh, but he's still housed at Green Hill. There's a new law that went into effect last year that allows offenders to stay in juvenile detention until age 25 instead of age 21. The idea being that adult prisons can be damaging to young people. And if you want to read our full report online, just text the word REPORT to 206-448-4545 and we can send it to you. Boy, that's, 